Hey guys, this is part three of the response series that I'm doing today. And uh, in this teaching, I'm going to be sharing two dreams that are very significant that the Lord um, really unpacked this revelation of why we bless Israel. We are called, we are commanded by scripture to bless Israel, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The word of God is very clear. The Old Testament didn't get thrown out when Jesus came. It, be, it was fulfilled when Jesus came and we are living in that fulfillment. So that command to bless the people of Israel is still for us today. And uh, the dreams that I'm going to share really speak to that. But also um, this covenant that in, in Genesis chapter 12, the Lord comes to Abram and says he, he basically makes a covenant that is unconditional. And he says, I will bless those who bless you. And in Genesis 12, 3, I will bless those who bless you. And him who curses you, I will curse. And in all, in you, all of the families of the earth will be blessed. So um, this is a covenant that God made to Abraham and to his seed, to all those who, were, who came from him, which is the people of Israel. And this isn't a covenant that goes away. Um, based off of someone's behavior because God himself made it and established it. It's not conditional. So knowing that, it would be very um, disturbing and upsetting if God said, oh, you know what, I changed my mind because you guys aren't listening to me, so now this covenant doesn't apply to you anymore. No, that, that should be scary to us if we believe that because then that same um, wavering and changing of God's mind about his promises would apply to us as well. So when God makes a promise and a covenant, it is unchanging, just like the promises he makes to us. And so that, that covenant, as believers in Jesus Christ, we've been grafted in. So that same promise applies to us, that God will bless those who blesses us. He will curse those who curses us. And in us, all in our um, our belonging to the Lord Jesus Christ, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So we are commanded to bless Israel. And that is um, so important for us to stand firm upon and know um, as the people of God in order to give a right defense, especially in the face of a lot, a lot of propaganda and de deception that's uh, swirling in the atmosphere. So... Uh, the, what the Lord really led me to, I'm going to share two dreams, but first I want to speak to the spirit of Antichrist. The spirit of Antichrist hates the people of Israel. He hates the nation of Israel. That spirit that has been in the earth that Daniel talked about, that's been in the earth um, since way back, that hates the Jewish people. It wants to wipe them off of the face of the earth. We saw it throughout the Old Testament and the New and throughout history. We see it in Nazism. We see it in communism. We see it in terrorism, jihadism. It hate, it's all, it's, that spirit of Antichrist hates the covenant people of God. So it hates the Israelites and it hates Christians. It hates those who've been grafted into the covenant and those, the people of the covenant, Israel. And it hates, it, hates us because... Israel and the people of God stand in the way as a stumbling block to the spirit of Antichrist. They stand in the way as a rock that blocks the total control that the Antichrist wants in the earth. It stands as a threat. So if it can wipe out Israel, if it can wipe out Christianity, then it will have control of the earth. So my encouragement and also warning to those who are resisting the idea of blessing Israel as God's covenant people is watch what the spirit of terrorism and what the spirit of antichrist in the earth watch what they hate and who they hate because that is showing you what is a threat to darkness that is showing you what is a threat to total control by the spirit of antichrist in the earth and Anyone who stands in the way of that spirit, it will try to destroy. It will try through first deceiving many people to believe that that, that the person or the nation that's standing in the way, that that person, that nation is, the, is actually the problem. So first through deception, saying that person is the problem, we need to get rid of them, then all the problems will be gone. Or that nation is the problem, if we get rid of them, our problems will be gone. That's the first step. The second step is through hatred 
that builds. You get you receive the lie that builds hatred in your belly, and then that will justify people acting in violence to remove. And so we see this with people that have stood in the way of Antichrist, and we see this with nations that stand in the way of Antichrist. That spirit of Antichrist that caused Nero to blame, to falsely accuse, accuse Christians and have them all killed because he wanted to wipe them off the face of the earth. That spirit in Nero is he blamed them first for what they did not do. And that allowed that hatred to rise in order to justify killing them. We see that same hatred of Jewish people in Hitler. We see that same hatred of Christians and Jews in jihad. And so Jews and Christians and those who defend them are a threat to the Antichrist spirit. We have to have that reality in our mind and we have to pay attention to what that spirit is raging against. That is what we need to be standing in the gap for. That is who, that is the nation and the person that we need to be praying for. Um, so we see America, at, she is not perfect, we know that. America as a covenant nation, because America started as a nation much like Israel, she is a paradigm for Israel. America started in covenant, making a covenant to the one true God. Her covenant to God and her commitment to, to pre the preservation of Israel makes her a threat. That is why the destruction and the unraveling of America is so important to, the, to this spirit that is using people and groups, uh, but it's a spirit. It hates America because she is a covenant nation like Israel. She's a covenant nation to the one true God. She stands as a beacon and a light on a hill to the rest of the world with the gospel of truth and freedom, but she also stands to defend Israel. That is why this spirit hates America. This spirit also hates uh, President Trump. And we, <laughs> if you can't see that, then I don't believe your eyes are open because the uh, amount of hatred toward that man is, is, is beyond what beyond explanation so I want to, I say that because you can see it in nations but you can also see it in a person now let me say before I share the dream that I'm going to share about him is in no way is Israel perfect America perfect or President Trump perfect perfection is not what is required for uh, the Lord to have a covenant with you or for you to be appointed for his purposes perfection is not the issue the issue is covenant and being appointed to fulfill or to protect the covenant. So I, my understanding of what the Lord showed me is that President Trump has been appointed for this hour to, uh, f to protect the covenant with America and Israel. So again, I am not saying that, they're, that they are perfect. There needs to be cleansing in the, in the, the man and the nations but it is about the covenant that God has with those nations and the people he uses to protect those covenant nations. Now I'm gonna share the dream. So in this dream, I shared this actually in 2020, October of 2020, I had the dream in the spring of 2020. And in this, I'm gonna put a link to the dream uh, where you can hear the whole dream. But basically in this dream, this, this dream, um, this was before I was even paying attention to much and the Lord really woke me up and gave me this corporate political dream that he had me release. And so when I had this dream, the Lord woke me up to the reality of, yes, Genesis 12, the Abrahamic covenant is still in full effect. It never lost. I never changed it. Those who bless Israel will be blessed. And this is what that dream shows. I was in the dream standing in President Trump's office. And uh, there was a man and his son who both represented Israel standing in the office to off to the side of his desk. And I point, I said to President Trump, you will, you will win. That's you. That's you. You are the father. And I pointed to the father. That's you to the son, which I believe represents Israel and the preservation of the legacy and the continuing on of Israel. But I believe that also represents those who are grafted in like Israel, that his, who he is and what he is appointed to do is to be a father protector type 
to Israel and to the covenant people, the Christians of God. And that is why the next scene of the part of the dream, President Trump handed me all of these white ballots um, that I, who I represented the church was to carry the ballots down a huge landslide and landslide after landslide with the assistance of the Holy Spirit, the church would carry those pure ballots to the finish line and it would be publicly displayed at the end whenever that will be. So that was the dream, but this dream solidifies very clearly that the blessing upon President Trump and the blessing upon the America, any American leader, but the American nation is because it acts as a father to Israel. And that is why I wanted to share that dream because you, that, that's, it clearly displays that reality. Um, the other dream I want to share is the dream I had. I had a dream that I posted um, on social media. I don't believe I made a video about it. So I'll post the typed out version of the dream. But in a nutshell, I had this dream in 2020, and in the dream, um, there was a popular evangelist minister who, um, who he came up to me and said, don't worry, because I saw all of these signs of that the enemy was out to get the church. And this evangelist said, don't worry. And he wrapped his arms around me and hugged me and said, you don't have to worry about anything. And I knew I could see that we were being chased and that we, there was a threat coming, but I listened to him. And then in the second part, in the second part of the dream, I was with, um, other church members and they were just enjoying themselves, doing life as usual. And I started to try to warn them and they got upset and they told me to leave. And when I left this church, uh, function, I walked down a road and all of a sudden the third scene was. A, a ghetto type area of boarded up homes with a, a big gate around it for and it said on the wall Christians and Jews and I was now living in this this concentration camp ghetto area and had to sneak out if I wanted to attend church now I believe that dream shows the plans of the enemy and why he is so hard against uh, what he's trying to do in the earth in this hour and we can see that starting to manifest in this hatred of Israel that's coming forth. But the reason I share that dream is because it surprises me that many Christians are joining in this religious wokeness um, and against Israel. That it, because it's surprising and it's very ironic because our that hatred of the Jewish people in, in that comes from that spirit of Antichrist in the earth hates Christians. So what they would do, the hatred they have, what they would do to the Jewish people is the same hatred that they hate Christians with. And so if we would be fools to believe that that same hatred would not be turned against Christians in a second. And so that's what the dream showed. I believe that the prayers of the saints, the Lord showed me that I believe this was a conditional dream that if the church like this foolish evangelist in the beginning said, oh no, everything's going to be fine. Let's just all be happy. If we believed that and didn't raise up and, and fight against evil in the spirit realm and with our prayers and our decrees and, and, and speaking truth, that that would be the, the end. Uh, that would be the plan of the enemy would come to fruition. But that's not going to come to fruition because of intercession of the saints. We're going to fight against this spirit of antichrist in the earth. We're going to speak truth. We're going to stand firm and have our armor on as warriors in the body of Christ. And, but, but that reality, I believe that dream was a warning of what would come. And so our, our connection as being grafted in, we are brothers and sisters in the family of God with in that covenant relationship God has with Israel, we've been grafted into that. So we need to be aware, not just to stand in, in protection of Israel, but also pray for the Christians around the world because that same hatred hates both. And so we stand in solidarity in, in, in for righteousness and truth in protection of the covenant people of God. So that's what the Lord had me share. Um, Father, I ask you would bless your people. We stand in agreement with your word and we bless your people, Israel. We bless those who've been grafted in through Jesus Christ around the earth, your people around the earth. 
We thank you for your unchanging, irrevocable covenant to us of promise that it can't be taken away. We thank you for your angelic army that guards and protect us. And we stand in agreement with your word and decree blessing and peace over Israel and over your people in Jesus name. Amen.